This is a smartphone, and it is indeed quite smart. It stores all your contacts, helps you navigate to that hot new restaurant, and even <coughs> reminds you of your cousin's birthday. Wait, where was I? Are smartphones making us dumber? Our topic today on SHIP. The app Digital Wellbeing tells me I received 84 notifications yesterday and spent exactly two hours on my smartphone, for which I unlocked it 77 times. If I hadn't deactivated push notifications, my phone would beep every minute or so, as apps vie for my attention. That can be fun. Wow, <laughs> cool video. But it can also be stressful. Stress hormones can get released with every notification, heart rate increases, muscles tense up, it's no laughing matter. Tech companies favor push notifications. They want to maximize the amount of time we spend on their apps. Because the more we use those apps, the more information on us they can collect, which they can monetize for advertising. Neuroscientist Henning Beck from the Goethe University Frankfurt explains what effects this has on our brains. Also the uplenkung passiert here. This is where distraction happens. When I concentrate on one task, these brain regions are active. All sensory stimuli are filtered out by this region, the so-called diencephalon, blocking access. But when there's a stimulus that's very different to other stimuli, it gets through and distracts. This is what smartphone and app developers capitalize on. They want to create products that permanently grab our attention with push notifications, vibrations, audio signals, and so forth. New stimuli mean different brain regions are activated and sort of pull power from my ability to concentrate. Suddenly, I am no longer focused on my one task because my brain is having to process multiple stimuli. And that means I can't devote all my mental resources to fulfilling my original task. According to a recent study, using smartphones can make us feel more restless. Normally, the more someone performs a certain task, the better they can do it. And as a result, their brain signals become calmer. But the opposite is the case for smartphone users. The more they use their devices, the more erratic their brain activity becomes. One possible explanation for this is that smartphone users tend to have several apps or browser windows open at once, which can lead to overstimulation of the brain. Our brains aren't meant for multitasking. When I switch tasks quickly, I tend to overlook things and my error rate goes up. And while switching tasks, my brain also needs a moment to readjust, which is another moment when we're error prone. The problem isn't technology itself, but how we use it. When we constantly use such devices, we get used to being in a state of distraction. Over time, this will lead to it becoming harder for us to focus on and prioritize tasks, and that'll make us feel stressed. And we become more forgetful as well, because we can't focus our attention on one thing. But it's so darn useful. Dental appointment? The calendar app won't let you forget. Navigation apps? Always know the best route. Facebook suggests events you might like. A recent study indicates people may become mentally lazier the more they rely on their smartphones, especially those who are more intuitive than analytical. They use Google instead of their memory. Some scientists refer to this as the Google effect. We no longer memorize things because we can find them on Google. So, are smartphones making us dumber? So far, researchers have not found any concrete evidence that smartphones alter the way our brains function. But there are signs they could be impeding our memory and sense of direction. Brains tend to adapt to how we use them. This applies especially to our memory. Today, we no longer need to memorize as much as in the past. And using sat-navs means we don't have to rely on our sense of direction in the same way we did, say, 30 years ago. And this all affects our brains. In practice, smartphones and apps mean we no longer have to remember schedules, addresses and such because our devices do that for us. This means we're storing less information. But we're also practicing the act of memorizing less, 
which also has consequences. If I stop committing things to memory, I will lose the ability to do so, and that means no longer being able to process that information. Humans do more than just gather relevant information on the Internet. The difference between us and machines is still that we also have the ability to understand and process stored information. Our brains are especially good at retaining information particularly well when we can reference where we found it. That's easier to do with analog sources than digital ones. For example, when we read a book, we can often remember roughly on which page we came across a certain piece of information. But that's not necessarily the case when we're scrolling through a digital text. This impacts our ability to memorise information. Computers need to compress data because their storage capacity is limited. With humans, the opposite is true. The more contextual information we have about something, the easier it is for us to recall it. Some tech experts, like Nicholas Carr, even think we're gradually losing our ability to read and remember long texts. It's unclear whether that's the case, but it is clear that the more information we have memorised, the more new information we can add and store away effectively. Unlike artificial intelligence systems, we humans are also able to make decisions with very little information. Computers require lots of data to compare things and detect patterns. Humans don't. We can use one single piece of information to develop an abstract model and apply this to new situations. When it comes to creativity, I've still got an edge on AI. There's a study, we like those, that shows how much nearby smartphones influence us. Three groups were asked to perform a mentally challenging task. Group 1 was told to lay their phones on the table, face down. Group 2 was told to leave them in their pockets. Group 3 left them in another room. All phones were in silent mode. Guess which group fared the worst? Exactly. The one with their smartphones on the table. Just wanting to look at the phone is enough to diminish mental capacity. And it's built into the design. Many apps use mechanisms designed to get us hooked. Tech companies take advantage of our need for rewards and attention to make their products successful. Push notifications and social media comments ensure that we spend as much time as possible with their products, because the more we use them, the better for the product. Telephones and apps were designed to grab our attention and get us addicted in some way. In that sense, we can't get away, and we get used to them. Some apps even reward and praise users. But they do this randomly. It's what's called a variable ratio schedule. This is the same mechanism as what's used for gambling, and our brain loves it. Every time we get a message or a reaction to one of our posts on social media, our brain releases a little dopamine. That's the neurotransmitter that makes our whole body feel good. As a result, we make a habit of reaching for our phones. What we know is that when I get positive reinforcement on social media, that affects the regions of my brain that send out reward impulses. Whether I'm using drugs, achieving something, or winning the lottery, it's always the same regions of my brain that light up when I'm feeling good. And these regions are also activated by these apps and likes. At what point do we become addicted to those little rewards? It seems that varies depending on the person. Here are the signals to watch out for. Phantom vibrations. People who experience this think they hear the phone vibrating even though it isn't. Another warning signal is the fear of missing out, or FOMO. And nomophobia is the fear of not having your mobile device and being unreachable. I have to admit, I know all three phenomena, even phantom rings. Does that make me an addict? That's a matter of opinion. But I know it's a good idea to put the phone away now and then. I leave my phone at home when I walk with my dog. Digital detox definitely does me good. 
doing nothing without interruptions or distractions is beneficial to the brain. This means giving the brain small breaks in daily life, where you consciously give yourself the opportunity to process what you have learned and seen. The good news is that the brain basically does it by itself. It only needs you to not bombard it with new stimuli every minute. Daydreaming activates a part of the brain that researchers call default mode network. Previously acquired information is stored, restored or even reconnected. Here's some advice on how to give your brain a break. Designate smartphone-free spaces. Limit the apps that are allowed to send notifications. Ask yourself which apps you really need. Set offline times when you'll ignore your smartphone. And set your screen to grayscale instead of colour. That makes it less attractive. Regular exercise helps to reduce stress hormones. And meeting people in real life is very rewarding too. We have learned that virtual interactions cannot take the place of real social contact. Equally important, sufficient sleep. This is what the brain needs to store knowledge and clear out junk data, so to speak, so that we can get through the next day able to concentrate and without stress. There's no clear answer to whether smartphones are making us dumber. Some cry digital dementia. Others say, when smartphones remember things for us, we have room for other stuff. For me, smartphones are helpful gadgets. Everyone needs to decide for themselves how much they use them, just like with TV or video games. What do you think? Join our discussion on Facebook and our new YouTube channel. You'll also find explainers there, information on the latest tech topics, gadgets and everything else you need to know. Take care and see you next week.